on June 21st, 2014 in Cambridge, Massachusetts at Pandemonium Books and Games, a great store that ran a great tournament. There was a Netrunner tournament that they ran greatly. And in the elimination bracket of cut to 16, double elimination, in game number 27 of the top bracket, Sam L., the number one seed on the left playing Andromeda, met Chris H., the number two seed on the right playing Jinteki Personal Evolution. Both of these players met in the Swiss, where I believe the Corpse won. That bodes well for Chris if the history repeats itself, but does it bode well now that you know Sam knows what Chris has? These are the two remaining undefeated players in this tournament. While this game is going on, match 28 is being played. The winner of match 28 will face the loser of this game in match 29. The winner of match 29 will face the winner of this game in match 30. If the winner of this game wins match 30, they win the regional. Game over. If the winner of this game loses match 30, we will go on to match 31. The winner of match 31 is your regional champion. Andromeda with the mulligan. Jinteki seems to be happy. Match 27 begins now. One seed, two seed, undefeated in the elimination bracket face-off. Get hype. Get way hype. Here we go. I mentioned this <laughs> a couple games ago. I don't know how to play against a kill Jinteki with an Andromeda when you don't have the ability to recurse a Deus Ex. Um, if you, even if you have tons of Expose, having so much Expose will hurt you against other Corps because you won't have power in your deck. You'll just have Expose. Having not enough Expose, I mean, one Zybots, it will shut you down. Uh, not only did to spend run it and spend four credits, but you're gonna lose an exposed card. Medium against the open R and D turn one against Jinteki. Dirty laundries it sees one card. It's a nice. He lets it stay. Looked like a Yagura. I guess he's not gonna run without a decoder now. Medium should have a counter on it. He puts he remembers it later. That remote, I mean, we've seen enough games from Chris here. Is that remote a House of Knives? Is it a Gila Hands? Here comes. We are in the top four players remaining. Top four action. There's the top four prize. Special Andromeda Identity card. Using it as soon as he wins it. T.O. came and handed it over. Icing up R&D, taking money. Looks like... That's the Agura that just got drawn. But even though he knows that, nothing he can do about it. He's got to get a decoder from somewhere. Special order. Special order, but then install... You know, that, that hurts because you're, you're losing cards out of the hand. Takes a hostage early when the score is 0-0. Zero, zero. It's a Procon. Great thing to take hostage. Uh, Procon or John Masanori will help you a bunch. Probably the best cards in the deck he has for facing Jinteki. Because he can run early in the turn, take some non-lethal damage, draw back up while not taking an economic hit if he needs to use some of that money to, say, score a Fiedel or something. Uh, he's going to be drawing a lot. He's not going to have to spend any clicks taking credits. He can spend all his clicks drawing. He's going to get his credits on the side. Uh, Jinteki's not fast, so the five credits spent on the Procon isn't going to be a major setback, especially since he just earned them from the Dirty Laundry. Great move. Procon's going to carry him through this game. Oh, but that was a Gila Hands. He let it sit there for a turn. He let it sit. And I'm going to tell you why he let it sit. I want you to look over there. He has four credits right now, right? He took the Gila Hands down turn one. He could have on turn two if he was scared. Advance, 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 score. Well, the runner already had his chance to run it and didn't. So if he didn't run it in turn one, he's not going to run it on turn two, right? Let it sit. Then... He was able to ice up R&D, but more importantly, take a couple credits. 
to go to seven. Then, after spending the three to score the Gilahans, he was still at four, which means Snare is still alive. If he would have just scored that Gilahans turn two, he would have gone down to two credits. Snare is off. Suddenly, the runner's running like a nut all over everything. Right? He doesn't go below four credits to score. The runner wasn't going to run an unadvanced card that sat on the table for a turn. How about that? That's Jinteki play right there. Runs R&D after getting the Yag because he knows his Yagura because he saw Yagura on R&D. Gets the medium counter, but uh, only sees one card. He only asks to see one card. People don't, not a lot, some people get this rule wrong. When medium happens, successful run, you get a counter, a virus counter, no matter what. Then you say how many cards you will access, and then you access that many. You can't, like, decide to stop while you're in the middle of accessing, right? You say, I'm going to access X. And you can, so right now he has two counters. If he ran R&D, he would get one. And he would be able to say any number up to, uh, let's see, three, right? So, and then he would have to see the number that he said he was going to see. All right, pro conning it up here. No point in resing the Agura. Throwing out the Underworld Context, who needs those, right? There isn't going to be a big economic drain in this game. Setting up the Underworld is going to take too long. He already got a Yogg and an Inti. He played him before. He knows what ice are in there. Doesn't need a Sentry Breaker because he knows Pup is the Sentry. He's got money from Procon. Mushin, Mushin! Three advance. Do you run it? No. If that's a June bug, game over. Plascrete. I wonder what happened in their Swiss round. Did he see the Scorch in the Swiss round? He must have, because he's installing his Plascrete now. Maybe that. And he's going to R&D. No Rezi Gura, because there's Yag on the table. Medium goes up, but he still only sees one card. He only asks to see one card. He does not want to accidentally get killed. No snares have been seen yet. It's risky to ask to see a lot of cards. Maybe his strategy is get to game point uh, or get a lot of score, get to five points maybe. Then run R&D and ask to see a lot uh, and hope that you see uh, a winner before you see a killer. And just one big old R&D run because he's pretty much never going to clear the virus counters, right? He's like, oh, you want to run R&D and see seven cards? Go for it. But maybe if he gets to five points, he'll clear the virus counters. Maybe. More remotes. Advance the first card to four. Does that make it a Ronin? Or does it make it look like a Ronin? Okay, dirty laundry that card. Hope it's not a Jackson. It's a snare. Well, you're getting your money, but you're also getting your tag. And you're getting to lose three cards. Uh, he loses Data Sucker, Count Siphon, Special Order. Count Siphon might have been nice. So you can see if a Plaskrete saving you from death. There's the snare tag. Um, I guess he trashed the snare. I don't know if I would have trashed the snare. Maybe prevent it from getting Jackson Howard to did uh, by leaving it on the table. Force him to install over it first. Doesn't make too much of a difference. Um, okay, new remote. So this is really... Is this the first time we've seen someone in this tournament really running these remotes in this Jinteki deck? I mean, he's not running all of them, but look, boom, runs another one. Gets a Gila Hands. One net damage. Woo! Going down to two cards when there's a possible Ronin on the table. Procon a couple times before your turn is over, I suggest. And he procons one. And he procons two. There you go. Now nah, that Ronin's not going to hurt you. Procons three. So he ran the remote, procon three. If you got less than five and it's last click, procon can't be a wrong move here. 
new remote. Okay, so uh, the runner has shown he's going to run unadvanced remotes. He has shown he's going to run unadvanced remotes. He's dirty laundrying another one. Led Jackson. He's using it. Because he's using it, the runner does not get the dirty laundry money. Snare, Mushin no Shin, hedge fund going back into R&D. Alrighty. The dirty laundry, I think, was click one. But he's got a full hand. Uh, almost a full hand, maybe? Yeah, it looks he's got plenty of cards, so pro cons there. He's pro conning, but is he overdrawing, going over five? Uh, it drops a daily cast. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Makes up for the. Uh, you know the pro con drawing the daily cast pretty much paid for it, right? It's a good, it's a good deal. Okay, new remote hedging fund credit, or is it draw remote hedge fund? A lot of money on the Jinteki side. Oh, that ice was not Yagura. It was an Eli. Or maybe it got replaced. I don't know. Looks like he double-clicked it. Saw one card. Did he get his medium token? It's a little late for everyone here at this tournament at this point. It's probably past midnight around midnight taking a credit corp drawn Thinking time for everybody. Let's collect our thoughts. Let's, you know, let's not mess up here in this incredibly important and tense game late in the elimination bracket. And install advanced twice. Well, if you're at five cards, that June bug won't kill you. But it could be a nasty cerebral. And there's already a, ro a possible fully advanced Ronin chilling out on the table. So two advanced cerebrals could be pretty dangerous. Because uh, even no matter how much you draw with Procon, you'll be sitting at three cards. Ronin Neural can take you out. So if you get hit by a two cerebral, suddenly it looks like you're forced to run that four advanced card. Um, oh, it was a Ronin, the two advanced card. Good, good, good. Woo, nice and safe. Okay, one Ronin gone. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he is willing to run advanced cards as well as unadvanced. Mm -hmm. He'd only been running unadvanced cards up to that point. He never ran that first four advanced card. Um, you never know. That four advanced card could be like a future perfect. Just waiting for advanced score. Uh, runner just waiting to get to four points. And boom, game over. New remote. New remote. Lots of shells coming out for this game. All the shells. All the shells in the shell game. Run the newest shell. Another gear hands. Taking the net damage. 
It's a decoy. Decoy could actually be nice against the snare. You know, having the decoy down would actually give you a, a last click run if you need it. It runs the other remote. It's a Zaibatsu loyalty. Well, there goes your exposure if you had any, which you probably don't. So leave that leave that there. No point in throwing away four credits trashing it. If you don't plan to expose all the things. Sorry the, the runner put his uh, agendas off the table here. If I remember correctly, he's so far stolen two Gila hands. I think. Two to one, probably. I haven't seen any other agendas come out yet. Not even one run on HQ in this game so far, and we are deep in it. Uh, is the runner that afraid? Or is the runner... Uh, realizing that agendas in hand are probably things like Future Perfect, which you're going to lose a side game on. I don't know. Runs a new remote again. Psychic Field. He talked about uh, being afraid of Psychic Field because he got hit by it. Um, well, no, he saw it in their, in their Swiss round, but I think he won those side games. Let's see if he wins this side game. Sam... Loses the side game, loses his hand. Two, three, four, five cards down the tubes. Ooh. Will he trash the psychic field? No, I think it, it costs credits to trash it. Yeah, it costs two credits to trash it. So if you remember that it's there, there's not much the runner can do with it uh, by leaving it there. The only things they could possibly do are um, number one they could uh, obviously put an asset on top of it, and then the Psychic Field would protect the asset. Uh, I mean, put an upgrade, right? It's so like, let's say you had a Sand Sand you could, or a Caprice. You could put that on the Psychic Field. Now the Psychic Field is protecting Caprice or Sand Sand, and so the runner's not going to run it. And then you s suddenly you know, use the Sand Sand or use the Caprice and throw out the Psychic Field. Um, so if you don't think the runner has the corp has valuable upgrades, there's no reason to trash the psychic field, except for diversified portfolio, which is operation transaction. Pay one, gain one for each remote with a card in it. Uh, you're letting him have another remote to increase the power of his diversified portfolio. Right here, if you play diversified portfolio, that's a hedge fund that costs one, which is ridiculous. Um, if he just sets up another couple of remotes, suddenly. You know, he's paying one to gain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, man. The first level probably can get crazy uh, if you do not get rid of all the remotes the Corp has. But, of course, after a psychic field, the runner can't really do much here um, except draw. But a new card has been mushin no shinned. So that's threatening. You know, you got to think. Okay, so you mushin no shinned a card. Well, how can we figure out what card that is without exposing it? Well... He played it when he knew the runner had just been hit by a psychic field and would have to spend a couple clicks drawing, right? And it was Mushin no Shin, so that doesn't necessarily have to be an advanceable card. That could be a snare um, or something. So if the runner's going to run it, he's going to go pro-con, pro-con run. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's like if you're the corp, right, knowing uh, the runner... Just got psychic fielded. What card do you choose from Mushin no Shin? And if you're the runner, knowing that, you just got psychic field and the corp knows it, what do you do? All right. I think the cor the runner actually lost a click on his turn just from not remembering it, but he and the corp was like, are you sure? What did you spend your other click on? And... The, court, the runner was just like, ah, oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just keep playing, right? I guess he wasn't going to use it for anything. He didn't need to draw a card or another credit wouldn't have made a difference. Okay. Corp doesn't do anything with the card that was Mushin no Shin. Installs two more. Takes a credit. Runner comes right out of the gate running one of them. It's another psychic field. Woo! He's got to win this side game. Losing all those cards. His, his stack is low. Loses... 
Four cards down the tubes. Does not trash that psychic field. Is he going to pro-con three times? One, two, three pro-cons. Corpse turn. Advance. Ronin, Neural, four damage to follow up the Psychic Field. After a Psychic Field, the runner could only possibly have three cards in his hand at the end of the turn. Procon, 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 most likely. So a Ronin plus a Neural EMP will get the job done. If the Ronin is at least three advanced. Because that way you advance Ronin Neural, and that is what we just saw. Four damage coming out. Plascrete didn't matter. Game over. Chris H. advances to game 30. Sam L. goes down to game 29 to see who the champion is of the loser bracket. Of the lower, the lower bracket, not the loser's bracket. The, the people who have lost once.